Hey guys, it's Mark from Migraine Professional. I used to suffer from migraines and headaches until about five years ago when I figured out how to beat them and I've been migraine free ever since. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the four massive triggers for fibromyalgia, migraines, and headaches. So as we know, fibromyalgia, migraines, and headaches, they go together. In one study of 100 fibromyalgia patients, they found that 76% 76 of them experienced headaches or migraines and 84% of those had migraines or headaches with severe and substantial impact. That's huge. And so the first massive trigger that we want to understand is CS. That's our central sensitization. Central sensitization is a process by which our central nervous system gets sensitized. Our central nervous system is our brain and our spinal cord. And it becomes sensitized by continually going through uh, and, and being exposed to the same stimulus until it eventually develops a reaction that's uh, an exaggeration of that stimulus, of what a normal person would experience with that stimulus. So like many fibromyalgia patients know, they'll experience pain and things will be much more sensitive. So what's happening here is that the nervous system is becoming sen sensitized. Now the central sensitization can be described as if you're walking through a path in a forest and you walk that path many times and many people walk that path uh, many, many times, that eventually drives a groove into the ground and it creates that, it turns that route into a path, into a solid path. It develops this groove and the brain and our neurons go through the same process. So the rule is that neurons that fire together, wire together. So neurons, when they fire, they're sending messages to another neuron. So when they, when this process keeps happening, they, you continue going through the same neurons, the same neurons, the same neurons, these pathways get strengthened. That groove gets built because the, the brain always wants to provide resources on, um, towards every, whatever is being used. It is like a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. But if you lose it, if you use it a lot, then you, you reinforce it and you drive that groove. So what happens in central sensitization is that your body drives this groove, but it does it for something that is counterproductive. Usually in this case, it would be immune activation or inflammation or nervous system stimulation, pain. This will often turn little things that are not painful into uh, stimuli that, that feel incredibly painful. They can be amazingly painful even if to a regular, ordinary, healthy person, they would not be anything like a brush to the face or a little bump or a, uh, a workout, some workout soreness. To a fibromyalgia patient that, that is centrally sensitized, this may be a massive pain. The way we want to understand, the, the way that we can kind of connect migraines and fibromyalgia here is that this can be understood through threshold theory. So if you haven't seen the threshold theory video, I encourage you to, to go and watch it. Basically, threshold theory is the, the system of understanding how the body builds up triggers until eventually there's too many triggers built on top of each other. There's too much stress on the body that the body can no longer deal with it. And that's when we cross our threshold. And once we cross the threshold, then we trigger our migraine or in fibromyalgia, we would trigger that central sensitization. But with the central sensitization, what we're, what we're kind of trying to understand here is that every stressor after that threshold becomes exponentially more to the body. The body becomes sensitized and it becomes exponentially more inflammatory and oxidative and damaging. We really want to be careful. We want to do the best we can on bringing those down. So the next piece, the next massive trigger is SIBO and leaky gut. So SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. When bacteria in your intestines overgrow, and leaky gut is a process by which the, your tube, the lining of your intestines, which is a tube, the cells start to spread apart and they develop little holes, little passages between them. And through these passages, molecules can get through. Proteins, fats, carbohydrates, genetic material, waste from bacteria, food particles, all, all these different 
um, compounds that are in the gut can get through. And many of them, like uh, leftovers from bacteria, like LPS, lipopolysaccharides, um, can get through the gut and then they can become a massive, massive problem for the body. Now, if that continues to happen, if particles are getting through, they're landing in, let's say, our joints, our, our immune system is, is constantly trying to clean them up, trying to clean them up, releasing inflammatory messengers to get more help to clean them up, what eventually happens is that we get sensitized to those, uh, that inflammatory, oxidative, and, and immune reaction. Now, this is where SIBO and leaky gut kind of connects to central sensitization. And so what they found is that fibromyalgia patients, 30 to 70% of them have IBS. So it is massive. And IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, is incredibly deeply connected to SIBO, leaky gut, parasites, dysbiosis, and uh, a gut that is not functioning properly. And so if a gut is not functioning properly, if these particles are getting through, if they're stimulating our, our, uh, our immune system and our nervous system, then not only can we develop the central sensitization that leads to an increase in sensing pain, but those inflammatory molecules that are created, those inflammatory messengers that are trying to tell the body to bring more uh, resources to deal with the inflammation and the immune uh, stress, they can cross the blood-brain barrier, end up in the brain space, and then create neurogenic inflammation and lead to migraines, create that oxidative stress that migraines are so deeply connected to. And it's amazing what they found in a, a clinical study where they took fibromyalgia patients and they eradicated the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and they found that there was a clinically relevant alleviation of symptoms. So it's important that getting rid of that SIBO be part of the protocol, but you also wanna make sure you're healing the gut, you're healing that leaky gut, you're restoring good uh, bacteria to the gut and you're reducing inflammation and, and you're balancing the immune system at the same time. So the next massive trigger is adrenal burnout, adrenal stress. So whenever we're thinking of a chronic disease, we need to think of our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous systems. So our sympathetic nervous system is our fight, flight, um, and flee and fear uh, mode and our parasympathetic nervous system is our rest, digest, and repair mode. That's the mode that we're, we should be in while we're sleeping, and our sympathetic mode, our fight or flight mode, is the one we're in if we're being chased by a tiger, if, we, if our life is falling apart, if um, stress is, is taking over and we feel overwhelmed, then we're in that sympathetic nervous system. What we wanna understand is that if we're in that sympathetic nervous system too much, we are, releasing a ton of resources to deal with that because our body wants to give us the resources to deal with those stresses. Acutely, that's fine, but chronically, that tends to put us in the, parasymp in the sympathetic nervous system way more than we should be, and this disturbs everything. We cannot rest, digest, and repair properly. So we wanna make sure that we are taking it easy, we're, we're getting adrenal support, we're taking it easy, we're stepping back, we're making sure that we're prioritizing our, our eating habits and our sleeping habits so that we can repair, that we can digest properly. Because if we're not digesting our food, again, we're coming back to the SIBO, to the leaky gut, and then we're creating central sensitization, we're creating inflammation. And the last of the four massive triggers is magnesium deficiency. One of the simplest things that you can do, one of the easiest things that you can add into your daily life without much time and energy is magnesium. Making sure that you're getting magnesium through foods, your, your dark leafy greens, your beans, nuts, and seeds, um, and, and supplementing it, whether that be an oral supplement or a topical supplement or doing uh, Epsom salt or magnesium flake baths on a regular basis to make sure that you're getting that magnesium into your body. Because in the nervous system, magnesium is like the coolant. It relaxes things, it cools down that fire. 
So we need magnesium to be there to make sure that it can take the, the edge off of our, our tension, our stress, our inflammation, our oxidative stress, and so that it can help drive pathways in the body that create energy and that clean up waste. So I'm going to link to an article in the description on three profound discoveries with fibromyalgia, migraines, and headaches, and where we talk about what to do with fibromyalgia, how to kind of break it up, how to understand it um, from, a, from a holistic and functional perspective. So let me know in the comments below, do you have fibro and migraines? Do they flare at the same time or do they flare differently? Let me know in the comments. Thanks. Hey, it's Mark from MigraineProfessional.com. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner. And if you want to learn more about migraines and headaches than you've ever known before and understand what causes them, what creates them, and what you can do about them, make sure to go to MigraineProfessional.com. Thanks.